All right, guys, good afternoon and welcome to the International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, today is Saturday, March the 5th, about 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We appreciate you all taking time out to join us today. Uh, today on our meeting, we have a special guest with us from uh, outside of Chicago, Illinois. His name's Rich Snyder. Uh, you can find Rich's work on Instagram, Facebook. Uh, his Instagram handle is at chip.away. Uh, Rich uh, is going to be talking to us a little bit about developing his uh, caricature carvers or caricature carvings. Uh, before we get started, I just want to run through a few things that we've got going on with the International Association of Woodcarvers. I uh, just want to let you know we just released our first newsletter uh, that was sent out at the beginning of March. Uh, if you haven't signed up for that, make sure you go out and sign up. We're going to try to release that monthly. Uh, it'll give you a little information about what we've got going on with the uh, International Association of Woodcarvers. Uh, we'll probably have some articles and stuff that'll be in there as well, so make sure you sign up. Uh, I think Tom's just put the uh, the link over into the chat, so if you want to click on that, uh, there's a place there you can go in and sign up. Uh, you can also find our merchandise and some other things in there, so check out that link there in the chat. I um, want to remind you that there's some uh, workshop that's coming up. Uh, Dave Stetson's got one that's going to be starting next Saturday, so if you want to get in that class, you need to make sure you reach out with uh, today. Dave's on the meeting today and get signed up, and uh, I think he uh, he's making the pattern available. Uh, the rough outs are available through Dwayne Gosnell's site, so uh, reach out to Dave if you're interested in that. Uh, and then Janet Cordell's got a class coming up, the Bighorn Sheep. Again, that starts in May, so we've got a little bit of time on that one, but if you're interested in that, reach out to Janet Cordell. Uh, all this information you can find on woodcarvingacademy.com. Uh, go out and check out Woodcarving Academy. Uh, you can subscribe there for uh, their, their subscription uh, access for one month, three month, or a year. And uh, a lot of the classes that's going on or the workshops are out there now, uh, plus some other ones that have been done in the past are out there available. So make sure you go out and check that out. Again, that's woodcarbonacademy.com. We've got some cer certificates that we're gonna be giving away in the coming weeks. Uh, we'll be announcing those, but those will be giving you a one month subscription to Wood Carbon Academy, just so you can go in and check it out. So uh, watch for that on social media and make sure you sign up uh, so that you can be part of those giveaways. Uh, we're also going to be uh, auctioning off a Helvey knife uh, coming up in the probably next week or the week after. Uh, again, helvey has been a big sponsor of ours. Uh, they've helped us as far as the uh, subscription fees and stuff by donating their knives and allowing us to auction those off. So make sure when you see those that you participate in that. Um, Want to remind you too, there's a show that's coming up in September in uh, Colorado, uh, the Carbon the Rockies, it's uh, the CCA's first uh, competition and show uh, that it's the first annual one that they're having in Colorado Springs. Uh, go out and check out their website again. There's a link to that in our um, our newsletter. Uh, but go out and check it out. There's going to be six instructors. There's going to be vendors. I think Helvey Knives is going to be there. Heineke Woods going to be there. Uh, they're going to be releasing their new book called The Eyes Have It, um, and they're going to have a the carving competition there at the show. So make sure you if you can attend that that you go out and check that out. Uh, we're going to have Chris Hammock on in a few weeks. It's going to be coming in and talking about that as well. So uh, make sure you watch for that and tune, tune in for that. Uh, we've signed up a few new presenters that I'll be talking about at the end of the meeting. Uh, I'll go through the lineup at the end, uh, but we're continuing to try to take people um, on our list so that we can fill our calendar and make sure that uh, we have plenty of presenters uh, for the coming weeks um, that will take us through the summer. So uh, we'll be talking about that at the end. Uh, just wanted to let you know that, again, Rich Snyder's coming to us uh, outside Chicago, Illinois. I think Rich told me he's been carving 15, 16 years, something like that. Uh, Rich, we appreciate you taking We appreciate you taking time out to join us today, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Rich now. Um, so, uh, Rich, I'll go ahead and send it over to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Blake, and thanks, guys, for having me on here. Uh, had someone told me, it was probably around 2000, actually, I got started uh, later, in, eh, maybe 2003, somewhere in there is about what we can come up with. But um, yeah, but thanks for having me on. Someone said 20 years ago, hey, <laughs> you're going to be on the this program with these guys and they're going to ask you about carving. I would have said, well, you're a liar, but, uh, I never thought this would happen and I appreciate it. I really do. And I thank everyone that's on here watching it today. Um, 
a little bit about how I got started. Uh, I actually, it was on vacation. Uh, we visit a place up in Chitek, Wisconsin uh, every year. And the owner of the resort would, uh, he did some, he did chainsaw carving. So he would take like the little figurines you buy at Dollar General or uh, garage sales, I guess. I don't know where he got them at. But anyways, they would be mostly Native American or eagles or based around that kind of stuff. But, you know, they'd only be eight, 10 inches tall. And then he would have logs hauled in uh these big pine logs eight ten feet tall and he would take that little figurine and he would chainsaw rough it all out and then from there on in it was all just hand tools and uh i was watching him one time and it, this would have been in may uh and he was working on the face and so i asked rick i was like how do you I couldn't figure out how do you get the mouth out of there, the nose, how do you get all that out of there? So he took, literally took <laughs> on the side of the log, he took a tool and he did a mouth somewhat like that with the gouge. He just, and then tra you know, just went right over the top of it and then worked it back a little bit, showed me a little bit how he worked that face out. And I was mind blown, I was like, holy cow. So. He says to me, well, you know what, if you like to do this or you think you would like to do it, here's four or five tools. Don't go out and buy a bunch of tools. Just take these because we would go up twice a year. So we'd go up May and September and then bring them back. If you think you like it, you know, or if you don't, whatever, just bring them back. Well, I went home and I got a pine log and I was like, I'm going to make a face on this pine log one way or the other. And, uh, Sure enough, I took them and went out in the backyard and just hacked away at this <laughs> piece of pine and I got a face out of it. And from what he was telling me, and like every carver learns, the nose is the first furthest thing out and then you push back from there. And that's what he told me. And when I got home and did that, obviously that's the only thing I remember because I here's my first carving. And if you look at it from the side, uh, can you see that? Okay. You're good. Yeah, we're good. So the nose, I nailed it. It's the furthest thing out. That, that I had no <laughs> issues there. I think that's the only thing I remembered. But nothing else. It went, it's all flat. It looks like, <laughs> oh my God. It looks like something out of a Pink Floyd video. Or, I, I don't know, but... It was a face and I got done with it and I was just stoked. I was like, this is incredible. I, I'm sure I'm going to have people calling me and wanting this, but, um, you know, it has the sunken in eyeballs and, and I think even when I looked at the one that the first carving he did up north, his first carving had these worm lips. And I, I thought everybody starts with this because they don't know how to get that depth in there. So, that was my first one. My wife loves it. She loves this one, but, and I keep it around just because it says hilarious. But so from that, I did a Native American. It was in a flat piece of wood, but it's like it got worse. It didn't get better. It was, it was worse than that. It was super flats. And then I was starting to get, holy cow, am I ever going to get, you know, will I be able to do this? Um, got my tools, bought some tools, went back that next September, gave Rick his tools back. And from there, it's just been buy tool. I bought so many tools at a ridiculous amount of tools. They don't need them all. Uh, I bet when the woodcraft shop in the Peoria, I'm actually from Rome, Illinois, which is about two hours south of Chicago. Um, I'd go into Peoria and I know that they were probably rushing the door to get at me because they probably figured here he comes again. He's going to need some, some dozen tools or he's going to need something, but whatever. I got them now. Uh, so moving forward, <clears throat> uh, I took some classes. Uh, I carved a lot of 
stuff with my tools that I shouldn't have. I mean, a lot of hard wood and just, just hacked away at the wood. But um, some of the stuff that I did when I started out carving, I would do the bearded guys. Um, to me, it just, it was easier, you know, to, it, it, it showed you could get a lot of movement in there and it was all, you know, and people liked it. So if I did, you know, if I did a couple of these and I would get the, you know, hey man, that looks really cool. You ought to try to sell that. Um, so I did some. So I kind of moved away from flat face and kind of graduated forward to where I could get, I'm trying to find one that, even though this is on a flat piece of wood, well, let's do look at this one. This one here, it's actually two pieces. It's actually, if I, if you did a Gargax Santa, uh, they, he does it on the diagonal. Well, I had this on two of those on vacation, two of those pieces, and I had him glue it together for me, the, the resort owner, and then I carved that. So this is actually two pieces that I did that with. So here you can kind of see, I've definitely moved away from the flat face. It's obviously, but it's on a 90, so it's, kind of hard to make a flat face. You'd have to purposely get at it to make that flat. But yeah, so I, that was one. I was kind of proud of that. Um, but then I just started carving everything. I had the Gargax Santas and uh, I call them Gargax Santas, but I don't know if, if he actually was the one that came up with that, but uh, that's the name associated. Um, so I was doing a lot of the Santas, doing a lot of the walking sticks. Um, Matter of fact, I did a walking stick for a guy that my wife, uh, she works in the waitress, she waitresses. And this is years ago. Um, <laughs> he wanted one, a walking stick, asked, does your husband do walking sticks? So she says, yeah, he'll do it. He'll do a walking stick. I had done that many of them, but so I did one for him and she took it to him. She, sure enough, he bought it. And then about a week or two later, he took it back to her and said, every morning I get up, there's sawdust underneath this stick that you gave me. <laughs> so lesson, make sure there's no bugs in the sticks that you sell because it's no good. I brought it home. I don't know how I ended up getting them out of it or peeled it off or whatever, but I ended up putting something on it and letting it sit and then eventually they were gone or it wasn't coming back. So he did get it back. Um, as far as, uh, then I did the Rick Jensen uh, little uh, house. It was actually the first house that I did was this right here. On a Saturday, they had a little class over in uh, Bentendorf, Iowa, um, Larry and uh, Larry and Judy had a little class over there and a the guy was teaching how to carve these. And uh, so I went over in the, in the morning and stuck around all day, and did one of these. I thought that was pretty cool, but I don't have, I didn't have a real direction. I just carved anything and everything. I'm, it, it didn't, I was like some guys pick a direction they want to go. John uh, Overby and the, the guys that can do the pick a direction and head down that lane and they're, and they're constant with it and they get really good at it. I have a ton of respect for, uh, but I, I'm not that way. I'm not wired that way. So me doing the guys that I'm doing right now is good. I like it. Um, but I'm kind of all over the map with my carving and I'm <laughs> definitely trying to get myself to where I can do more of the little, you know, the guys that you see now on Instagram. Um, the patterns, and I know I'm jumping all over the place, guys, but uh, I'm trying to get a bunch in. And uh, the patterns that I use, that like a lot of these, I, like this little that I showed you guys earlier, that is basically this guy here from Harley Repsol's. So 
Uh, I don't scale it up a lot. I mean, I don't move it up to one inch scale. I think he calls for it to be 11 inches tall and use a three inch block of wood, three by three. But I just keep it that size right there. It makes it a little more difficult to, to get something out of it, but they're pretty cool when they're done. Um, matter of fact, this one here, that's another. Well, this is another Harley one. That's the, I don't know what she is, like a school teacher or something. But uh, I did her and it was turning out pretty good actually. But I had, the original one shows her chest way down, way down here. And it makes her look, she looks like an older schoolmaster or whatever. But um, I started carving the face and it got to be looking younger and younger. I was like, it just looked young. It didn't look right with her. So I moved her chest up and I carved a little more on the face to where a point where I overcarve. I'll start carving on something and, and I overcorrect. And eventually it's like, well, that's, that's finished. I'm, I've screwed the head up. So I got rid of the head <laughs> and I carved the pumpkin and stuck this in place of it. So, and I, I like the look of it. Um, she's pretty cool looking. Um, the little blood sp uh, spatter that I did on her dress, I just took a toothbrush and dipped it in paint and just flicked it at her and, and got that spatter on her. So I like, she's pretty cool little carving that I had there. But um, yeah, so well, let me see here, what I got. Uh, classes, I don't know, did I say classes? Did I tell you classes? So I've, I've taken some classes. Uh, I took uh, Harley Refsall's class. I took a, one class from him. I took a, two classes from uh, Heli Mayer, the Austrian carver. That was awesome. I mean, he, I did a uh, cherub in his class. It's kind of a wonky head, but I did that in his class and I also did, I think I've got it posted on uh, Instagram. It's that door topper, which is real ornate. Um, that we did half in class and then I brought the other, brought it home and then I worked out the other half at home with what you learned from class. And I thought it turned out pretty cool. So, um, and I also, I took a class from the bishops and I was telling the guys earlier, I, that was the only class that I took that I was I felt super intimidated by. Uh, the people in class had uh, brought in some of the stuff that they had done and it was sitting out front of them. And I walk in and I've got a tool roll that's, I know I've got too big of tools to do what we're doing to do in class. And then uh, Phil and Vicky were cool about it. They, you know, hey, we can make it work. I bought more tools, <laughs> but uh, so what I did, I did in their class, I did the uh, piece called Itchy, but that class there, I learned how to do the buttons, how to get some of them folds going, you know, uh, it was, I loved that class. I mean, it was, it was a great class. Um, learned about the bandana. You see, sometimes on bandanas, they'll have, you know, you don't, you got to pay attention to proportions because if you don't, you end up with this little bitty, you know, it's like that doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense unless it's tied really little and you've got this much hanging in the back of you a bandana wise. So paying attention to proportions it, it is, you know, obvious that's what you have to pay attention to proportions, but uh, yeah, learning the buttons and learning how to do the, the wrinkles and stuff was just, that I loved it. Uh, I still use their paint scheme for flesh. Uh, I might change a little bit, but I, I still use that paint scheme. When we painted this, and they'll, they'll tell everyone in class, I don't know if, if any one of you guys have taken their class, but they'll tell you just don't get crazy with the paint because your first instinct is to try and get it darker 
you know, it doesn't look right. It just looks too chalky or too light. But as soon as they would put the linseed oil on it, it just pops that color out right away. And it, you, know, you can tell if you've overdone it. And I'm sure, I mean, I'm sure we've all done it, but uh, yeah. But so that was the one I, I did in the bishops class, but I was so, I was so intimidated by them and, but they were great. They were great with me. I, if you take a class, I think John Overby mentioned this one time, if you're going into a class and they give you a rough out, at least clean it up, start cleaning it up, taking the saw marks off and, you know, just getting it cleaned up. Cause I would just sit there and just kind of look, pick at it a little bit and just keep my eye on them, see if they were getting closer. And then it was like, yeah, I've kind of got that much done so far. Well, I hadn't really touched anything. So Phil finally said, you need to take your knife to it, clean it up a little bit, you know, and, but I was super proud of it. Uh, <clears throat> Harley, uh, let's see, yeah, Harley Russell's class, when I took his class, um, we, I did the, is this Oscar? Yeah, Oscar. And another super nice guy, patient guy. Uh, we got all done carving it. And he's like, okay, we're going to move on to painting. Well, he had passed around this little carving that he had done years ago, I guess. And maybe he does this at every class, but he, he passed this little carving around that he had put in linseed oil and forgot about it. And he said, I don't know how many weeks went by. And I finally was like, oh my gosh, I got that, you know, sitting in linseed oil. Well, when he passed around, it had a lot of weight to it. I just liked the looks of it. I liked the feel of the weight of it. Uh, so I told him, I, I don't think I'm gonna paint it. And <laughs> he looked at me like, okay, uh, whatever. But uh, yeah, I didn't want to paint it. I, and I love the look of it. But um, so as far as classes, that's, you know, what I've done. And I told you in the beginning that I carved everything. I was carving everything. Um, we had some, my wife finally asked me, she said, Is, do you, can we just put some of that stuff in a garage sale? I didn't care. I mean, I had so much of it. It was like, stick it out there. If you can get something out of it, let's do it. So she did, she put it in and uh, there was a couple of gals from Peoria uh, that stopped by that worked for a gallery in Peoria. And <laughs> they were like, can we take some pictures of this or maybe take a couple of pieces in and show the owner? Because I think she'd be interested in it. She was a interior decorator for high end. So I told her, yeah, I'd love them. Take it in. Let's just see what happens. Um, and she ended up calling me and said, you know, I, I like what you have. I have a spot where I can, you know, I know I could showcase your stuff at my, my store. I was like, super. And she's like, but all I needed to do is put a number on the bottom of every one of them, right? title it and tell me what you want for it. And after that, we'll, you know, take care of it. And uh, so I did, that lasted, I don't know, maybe a year or so. Uh, her husband had got sick and they ended up losing the shop, but I, I would go in there and look at the place and see all this artwork. I mean, that I thought, how in the world is this in there? But whatever. It, my stuff was in there and it was, it was cool. Um, I had done, I think what initially caught their eye was I had done some big pieces of slab wood um, that were just, you know, cut off logs that uh, we were, we wanted to, they got a little thing out here called Spoon River Drive. And all it is, is just a, I don't know how many miles of just driving around looking at crafts and whatever, and people sell out of their yard what they got. Well, this couple had some slab wood there and it was already had the form. It already had that bearded look to it. And when it was thick enough where I could put a face in it and they, they had two pieces of it. So I brought that home, carved it up. And uh, I think those what sold there first.
but a lot of people like the little, they like the Santa stuff. And I was doing some really crude, uh, like this little guy here. Well, I was doing some of the, the Gargat guys like that, but um, I was doing these like little crude square, looks like the toy bag is melted on the side of him, but they liked it. <laughs> I, and I didn't get it, but I, I actually, the gal that buys my stuff every year, she'll buy two or three carvings from me at Christmas time. She really liked these. Okay. But I started, then I started doing the Santas that are, you know, more this, I, that I've got him on Instagram and the little patchwork guy. But so you, there's a progression there. You know, you can see I went from flat face people to all the way up to what I'm doing today. Um, I, I use a lot of the patterns. I mean, I take them out of the book. That's what they're there for. So anyone that's thinking, oh, I can't do that. I mean, if I do that and I'm copying their work, well, that's what it's there for. I mean, they put it out there for you to make it your own don't copy it and then make it exactly like theirs. That's, that's not the way to do it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I like Harley's got a lot of little patterns in there. Most of the little guys that I do, it's his pattern. This guy here, uh, this guy, there's another one. I got. Oh, that first, this guy. So this one was on Instagram. That one got a lot of likes on it. They, but that there is John Overby did a, and I think it might've been on your guys' little uh, program, showed a pattern. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. So I, and I told John, I, I'm going to use that pattern. And so I used it for that one. I used it for this one, but there again, I, I just went over correcting on the face and it went off, it was gone. So, no head. I took the head off and let it sit on the shelf for a while until I did a little carving. Uh, Pete LeClaire has a book and he's got some simple patterns in there and that's what this is. So I carved this, drilled a hole in the top of his neck here and stuck it down in there and ended up with this carving. So you don't give up on them. Just <laughs> hang in there. Uh, this little Jim with the fish and the cane pole. Uh, that's just a skewer, a bamboo skewer. If you uh, if you take that and heat it up, just put a little bit of heat on it and put a little pressure on it, it'll bend over like that. And uh, it worked out fine for me for a cane pole. So he got his little golf cap on, but. Um, yeah, that's kind of my story. Uh, I, you know, I've fumbled around and messed around, and I and like I said, I wish I had that. Uh, was it Dave Francis on last weekend that he does those Santas? I mean, you could look at a hundred thousand Santas and see one of his, and you'll know that's one of his, and that's where I would like to be. So we're I'm at least have something recognizable. And the only way I think I'm gonna be able to do that obviously is to stick with one thing. Uh, yeah, here's the gal that was on Harley's that ended up being this, that, but, uh, so yeah. Um, and here's that Pete LeClaire pattern for the head that I just showed you. And he's got a really good book. I, I mean, I, I'm not much for looking at the, I tried to follow Mark, Mike Shipley's uh, pattern for the little C guy. I just don't have the, I can get so far in and then it's just, I, I'm done with the pages and I'm on to my own little, trying to get my own thing out of it. Um, one of the people had, asked how I get that wet look on there. You know, how do you, how do you make it look like the jacket's wet? It's really just, I put on an acrylic on there or like a clear, I don't know, with polyacrylic 
and then uh, just wax it to give the jacket and the hat that kind of look. And as far as the paint goes, it was just a yellow jacket. And I think I just took burnt umber, really washed down and uh, just kept going over it until I got that kind of look to it. But do I, ha I don't have a set way I do painting every time, other than I will say probably with the flesh tone, I use that Bishop color. And uh, I start there and just, add to if I want to change it up a little bit and hope that I don't screw it completely up. But uh, that's about <clears throat> what I've got as far as, uh, I mean, I could sit here and show you every carving that I have in here, but we would be here a long time if I did that. Um, hey Rich, there's a, there's a question in the chat. Um, somebody yeah. wants to know how you heated the skewer to make the cane pole. Oh, uh, I just took a, one of those long lighters that you light fireplace with or whatever. And I put a little pressure on it and just, just kind of, you know, if it was a straight stick, I just put a little bit of pressure on it and just keep the candle or the, the candle lighter moving back and forth and uh, don't get too close because it'll just burn up and break. So, uh, and just keep pressure on it and it'll eventually, it'll bend in the shape once it bends just hold it there let it cool for a second and it'll it'll keep that shape and then i just burnt in the little uh lines to make it look like bamboo like a bamboo cane bowl but uh yeah anyone's got any more questions fire them out there or i can keep showing this stuff and we can i can try to paint uh oh i know what i was going to say did you say doug was on here is Doug Lenker on here? Yeah, I believe right. I saw him on here. Yep. Yeah. So, and I was telling the guys, I don't know what when I was telling you guys this, but I had uh, <laughs> had some wisdom teeth pulled out a while. It's been, God, it's been a few years back now. But, uh, yeah, I took some, uh, I had to take pain medication for the day, and, and I carved along with you when you were doing your little Nomi guy. <laughs> So a lot of fun that was. It looks pretty cool. I love it. Very nice. So, thanks, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> I was yielding the knife and under the influence. But so, yeah, uh, I had a, there's a Santa. And I was showing the guys this earlier, too. This is out of a, I don't know what kind of what it is. I think we kind of thought maybe maple, but it's hard as a rock. Um, but I did this Santa quite some time ago and uh it turned out pretty cool and but i that was i think that was the only one i ever did in the spindle because it was it was hard it was terribly hard wood uh yeah so any more questions then I'd, I'd be glad to answer answer them rich yeah it's dan, it's dan from grand bend and i'm just wondering like you you um, you sort of said you liked, but you didn't like going to the uh, classes. What what was your favorite thing when you when you went to when you went to wood classes? Uh, you know what what did you learn? Uh, you know, with it just depends. I mean, a lot of times when I went there, I with the the um, Helly Mayor. I really wanted to do because I was doing the bearded guys and I and he had that door topper which I have on Instagram that was real ornate and uh, so I needed to I wanted to learn how to, to you know get that depth that he had and, and the, all that movement that he had going in there so in his class that's I kind of picked up uh, I've got a piece here like he does a lot of the on them things he'll do you know like these grapes and stuff, the fillers. I don't know what this is. I know what it is. It's a dock board. I mean, it came off of a dock. It's just a treated piece of wood. But that kind of stuff there, I, the leaves that, you know, that's what I learned in, from him and how to, you know, set them faces up like that. And um, really that, and with, with the bishops, even the littlest stuff, I like picked up the painting, like they washed the paint, they put the paint on really thin to where you think there's no possible way that that's going to look right when it's done. But 
it does you have you trust it and uh the, once they put it dries and you put the uh, linseed oil on they, they do just know, do you know offhand what your recipe what that recipe is i do and i'll be glad to give it to you um i'll have to look at it it's it's uh, one drop of dark flesh and two drops of medium flesh and one drop of georgia clay that's it and to a teaspoon of water. Okay. Yeah. But Thank you. <clears throat> I use that in every piece of wood that I get. I don't know. I mean, I think I could use the same piece of wood and paint it. And it just, some reason, either I'm going heavy at one time or lighter or whatever, but the, it varies a little bit. So, you know, experiment with a little bit, uh, you know, get an extra piece of wood. I've got a bag of little screwed up pieces that I keep next to me, next to where I paint, and I'll take them out and just kind of, even though I know it's not going to be identical to the wood that I'm carving on, but uh, at least I, you know, I've got an idea how it's going to go on and make sure that you get it stirred up completely because uh, you get the little chunks in there and you pick it up with your paintbrush and hit it on the carving and you end up with that dark piece of smeared paint on it it's terrible so you know <laughs> so you would you would recommend going to classes then eh? oh yeah oh definitely if if you can me my problem with the classes is i just i don't know following instruction i guess i don't i don't know what the my deal was but yeah i definitely like uh, harley's and i'm not sure all the guys i would definitely take the class i would take classes <laughs> I mean, if you, for anything really, but I, I, I would definitely take classes. Um, I would come out feeling, uh, you know, you, you, even if I didn't feel like I picked something up, you're picking something up. Uh, you, you just do. Um, and with I, like the your, I like your carvings. I like your carvings a lot. That's great. Thanks very much. Well, thank you. So did you start out with a chainsaw? Yeah, I did. I, uh, I actually I had chains. I done chainsaw stuff, but I actually started out with just the hand tools, um, and then I did some chainsaw carving. Yeah, with the bearded guy. Actually, I got one. Uh, this guy here, I did probably four or five years ago, um, and it's just a gnome. So I drew myself a little gnome guy. Uh, this couple down on the river, actually it's the cottage that we have now. I ended up buying my carving back because it's on that property. So this guy here uh, was the idea for it. And then I, they had, here's a picture of it. It doesn't, it's not exactly the same, but he's probably six and a half, seven feet tall. I didn't wow. do it completely in the round, but it, you know, it was facing towards their cottage and uh, they'd sit in the kitchen, they just loved it. But yeah, that's that's one that I did uh, with chainsaw. And I did a couple others for people that had trees that were just, they were, I don't know, they're no good anymore, but they were nice and solid. So I, they wanted me to put some, just the bearded guys, that's they, they like that. So yeah, I take the chainsaw, go in there and get it roughed out and then do some tool work on it. Do you do that much anymore? A little bit, yeah. I've got people that'll ask me. I did a little gnome out in our front yard. We had a, a is it a Braden pear or a Brandon pear? I don't know. It's a crappy tree, really. I mean, it if you don't take care of it. But uh, it broke off and left me out about probably a three foot piece of the tree that was probably I don't know, uh, two a foot and a half round, two foot round. Uh, and that was last year. I did a little gnome in it with the chainsaw. So yeah, I still, I still get the chainsaw out, and uh, but not as much. The first time I did it, I overdid it so bad that I ended up screwing my elbow up. But uh, that got straightened out, and so I'm I'm good to go. I just I'm a little more careful with it instead of going at it for eight hours straight. Uh, it, it will put a toll on your elbows. <clears throat> Would you mind one more time with the, the recipe for the flesh? Yeah, sure. It's uh, it's one. 
I've got the exact color over there, but it's it's uh, one drop of uh, medium flesh, or let's see, two drops of medium flesh. It's one drop of dark flesh and one drop of Georgia clay. And then it's to a teaspoon of water and just make sure that it's mixed up real well so you don't have that. It, it, you know, it seems like the only color that pops out when you screw up and don't get it all stirred in is a Georgia clay. It's, it, it just, and it makes a mess. It just does. So just make sure it's stirred up really well. And I like, I, I'll take it and get my paintbrush and I'll have a white this plate or my palette and just kind of brush it a few times and then I'll hit it on, on my painting or on my uh, carving. I'm sorry. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate you coming on and, and hearing your story. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Hey, Rich, uh, I believe we have time. Do you want to uh, switch over to your other location and maybe do a little painting? Sure, yeah. I'll head over okay. there right now. All right. While he's doing that, I just want to remind everybody about the videos that we have available out on YouTube. Uh, we've uh, recorded all the meetings that we've done in the past. Uh, right now, we have about 88 meetings out there, uh, podcasts, and uh, we're doing some uh, quick cuts and short uh, versions of some of the videos. Uh, so make sure you go out, like, and subscribe our YouTube channel and check out some of the past uh, past meetings that we've had. Uh, there's a lot of instruction out there, so um, just make sure that you take advantage of that uh, free instruction. I know a lot of people can't get out to meetings and uh, clubs and classes and stuff at this point, but uh, there is some some free demos and stuff that's been done out there. So make sure you go back and revisit those. Uh, Rich, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you. Sure, thank you. All right. Uh, okay, can I see that? Everyone see that all right? Yeah? Yeah, you're good. Yep. Okay. So on these low guys, now that's out of that uh, Harley pattern i all the guys that like these they're definitely brothers but uh actually there's the third brother too so they all they all come from the same family um that's the same pattern over and over but i just it's so uh it's a neat little pattern to do um and and fun to, I, to paint but so what I'll do when I start, I always have it on a stick, so I'm not messing, touching it all the time that I'm doing it. Um, I burn my lines in. Um, Lynn Doughty, Doughty, I went over this earlier, but he burns his stuff in. Now, he'll say that it doesn't, you know, I think a video that he is on, he said that it kind of keeps stuff in, in their zone. But that's true, but sometimes it'll puddle up or when you make these the lines that I have in there, it actually creates a ton of little valleys. So you just got to be super careful when you drop it in there that it's not heading down that valley and it'll it'll find a way out like here. Chances are it would run if I didn't was whoop, I'm sorry, if I wasn't careful, it would run completely down through these valleys and right into the pants. So you just gotta go at it carefully. Um, let's, uh, let me show you how I get started with this. So I'll wet them down first and let me get into the, okay. So let me get it wet down. And I just use a little squirt bottle to wet them down. Okay, is that still looking good there? I don't want it soaking wet because it'll pick up that paint and take off running on you. So I already pre-mixed some paint up. Um, if you look in the eyes right here, I don't know if I can get that. When I make eyes that are, they're so small or it's just a slit, if it's open enough, I'll take this little pointer tool that I have. I don't know what they call this but it's just got a real needle point on the end of it. And I'll take that, dip it in black paint, and then just carefully poke it in there until I get a couple black dots in there. And then I'll take it again after I wipe it off, dip it in the white and put a highlight in there. And it 
it does fool your eye. I mean, if you look at some of them, there it does look like there's an eye in there without having to go through and carve. Uh, it's a lazy way, I guess. I don't know. But that's the way I do that. Uh, I'll start with the skin tone. And this is, like I said, this is that bishop. And if anyone messes with me or whatever, I'm more than happy to give because they have stuff for their how they do their blue jeans and um, you know whatever. But I will start with their with this face here. I'll just pick it, and I don't pick. I don't have a certain paintbrush that I use or anything like that. It's it whatever I can get my hands on or whatever's on sale is what I grab. That's now how I do it. So I put that right there and I just kind of make sure they ain't got no weird stuff going on. And we'll start with his arm. And I will paint that and see there it kind of runs a little bit. So you gotta be careful. And it will be, super light looking to start with and I'm having the time looking at it because I'm not I don't have perfect light but and there we do the arm the other arm and then usually what I'll do is once I get that done I'll take with a uh no, it went up on the sleeve a little bit there yeah see that's just Plain Jane right there. But uh, I'll take in and with some uh, tomato spice, or I think that's what it's called. Yeah, tomato spice. And just highlight some of the areas where I think, you know, it needs to be a little bit red or a little blushy. Um, and then on the face, I'll just go in. And I go, go light. Don't go uh, dumping a bunch on him. So, yeah. If you got any questions, fire away while I'm. Can you guys? Am I getting out of this? There we go. Hey, Have Rick, you ever tried? People... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Have you ever tried wood burning those eyes in? Uh, I did actually, yeah, I do. And uh, nine times out of 10, I end up with a big fat black spot that I have to cut out anyway. So I guess not steady enough to hit them eyes the way I want. Now, unless you mean don't carve it in at all and just burn it. I hadn't really tried that way. I suppose that'd be a way to go about it rather than trying to sneak in between two spots like playing the game of operation. Okay. Rich, some people uh, paint like whites, like the teeth and stuff, solid. Do you do any solid painting on your carvings or is all of it a wash? I'll go solid with the teeth. Yep. Yep. I'll go solid white with, with the teeth. And uh, usually on the bottom lip, I will hit that with the uh, that tomato spice. So that's probably, it looks light and I can't really see it. So. Yeah, I think that's probably all right. Um, and then on a tomato spice for the blush, all I do is take the cap and then I'll add a little water to my little plate. And uh, I'll just use the same brush that has the flesh tone on it. Dip it in there, get it a little out on the plate and then just get it thinned down. Because if you don't, then you have the very red nose or a very red highlight. So, so there's a little bit there. And that's about where I want to, I, if, if you hit it and you hit it too red, just take the, I just take paper towel and dab it on it real quick. And it sucks it up and, you know, quick enough that it doesn't destroy it, but uh, yeah, so that he's got a nice little face there. Now, if I was, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put the teeth in it. 
I was going to show, let me, let me jump off this just for a second, because there was someone that made a suggestion to me, this little guy that I did, uh, can you see here, you see him all right? Um, when I cut it out of the, the pattern, and I don't remember the guy's name, and if you're on here, I apologize, but he suggested, he's like, well, take the other, I usually take the leftover piece and I'll carve on it and use it as a magnet or you know, refrigerator magnet. So I did. So this piece here, that's the leftover piece from the, so I did, I got two carvings out of one pattern. So I got a little sand out of him and then I got that guy. So whoever that was, thanks. That was a neat little uh, <laughs> suggestion. Okay, we got this nose done here. Maybe a little bit on his ears. Probably good enough. Yeah. Hey, Rich, just to clarify, you are painting on bare wood, right? Yeah, I sprayed it down with water. Just water. Okay, thanks. Yep, that's it. Yep. Just spray it down with water and then I keep checking it too. Make sure that I, it's not, you know, make sure it's not drying out too much and I'll hit it with another little bit of water, but you don't want it soaking wet. That's for sure. Just get it damp and then open up them fibers and that sucks that paint in. But, uh, so I've, uh, I've got some denim here that I'll put on his pants. It's, uh, and all it is is two drops of denim blue and a teaspoon of water. I'll mix that up real quick. <clears throat> How are we doing on time, Blake? Okay. Yeah, we're good. But, um, we're right at an hour, so. You're okay. Let me just stick a little bit on here. I'm sorry, I'm getting out of. And then on the pants, what I'll do is I'll take, <clears throat> wash, get this wash on there. And then I take a, uh, just paper towel and hit the high spots. That is just giving me kind of a faded denim look. We'll go in here and then I'll, I've mixed up some uh, shader too, and all that is is the exact same mix. It's uh, two drops of denim uh, to a teaspoon of water, and then I add a drop of burnt umber in there to hit some valleys so that I got some good shading. If I could sing, I'd sing for you guys, but I'm not really good at singing. So we'll just do this. Uh, <clears throat> Ryan Olson will offer you some singing lessons and carving lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Olson. I think I talked to him too. I think he was one of the other people that I asked uh, about a uh, saw. I think he bought the Pegas Pegasus or, and, uh, Yep, you got, I think, the 14 inch saw, and I still bought the nine inch saw. Like everyone I talked to is like, why are you even asking? But I just want to talk to people, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. That, <clears throat> yeah, this blue looks a lot better. On the the other guy that I had with the, it's got the little emblem on it, the international wooden carvers, whatever sticker on him. Uh, I used a uniform blue and I did not like the look of it. It was too, I don't know what happened. Well, I think part of it was that the shirt bled into it and made it really dark. So that's the, I'm going to stop on the jeans so that I'm not using up all the time on just the pants. And I'll do the hat in that color too. And then when I do the <clears throat> hat, since these guys are 
either the meat cutter or he's this guy here is probably a grill master. I'll take uh, anywhere I think he's going to grab his hat, which they're going to grab it by the bill 90% of the time and the back of their head. So I always take a little bit and put a little grease or I use, uh, I started using something called asphaltum, which is just full cart called asphaltum. And I just water it down really good. And then I'll hit the spots to give him and uh, you know, like he's touched his hat. And then where I need it just a little bit darker, I'll obviously I don't wash it down that much and it turns out pretty neat. That's not what I did on the meat cutter though. So my uh, my painting tips are, they change all the time. Will more coats take care of those lighter looking spots on the pants? Yep. Yeah, but you just gotta be careful because you can get carried away. Once you put the boiled linseed oil on it, it'll take up, you know, bring out that color. So what typically what I'll do is I'll keep going over it. And then I'll, like I said, I'll take a paper towel and wipe off spots that I want to look faded. So we'll get it down here in a second. I apologize for the time. Just get it rolled on here pretty good. And I think, is it, uh, I can't remember who the guy was. He uses, I think he uses washed down black uh, color to, to do his wrinkles and whatever. Um, I've tried that a couple times, but it, it, it gets me every time I overdo it. So now I just try to add a little bit of burnt umber to the same color and uh, it'll give me some of the shading that I need. So if I got it right there, right here. Uh, so I, I might hit the knees, uh, maybe down here around the pant leg, any of the high spots I kind of hit with the, take them off and gives it that <clears throat> faded jeans. Uh, and then I've got, here's the shader. And that's, this is just the same as the blue jeans, except I've added uh, a drop of burnt umber in there when I do the shading. I'll just pick up a different. And all you want to do is just go in and touch like up here. Are we on right there? That's enough. Just touch the areas where you want it to darken up right there and crack of his butt. Just you just don't want to go real heavy with it. Just touching the valleys and right here and behind his his bib or his whatever that is, apron. There we go. Yeah. So it, it's hard to, to tell that there's that shading in there, but once you do put the oil on it, it'll, it'll bring it out and you'll see it. The thing you don't want to do is get this too dry and then start shading because then it looks like the poor girls that put on makeup that they don't blend it well. It goes on, this color is that color, this color is that color, and you can tell where they've stopped. But, so you don't want to do that. I don't know where that come from. Sorry about that. And then maybe up here, I'll put a little in there. So yeah, that's probably about as far as I'm gonna go with the jeans. <clears throat> maybe just a touch more blue. It's all a guessing game for me. It, I, I wish I had a, something that I could say, this is exactly how I do it every time. And, uh, but it's not, it's, uh, I'm still hitting and missing. <clears throat> so there's that, I'll put a little on his hat. I actually busted the bill off of this, this guy. Now there with his, I just, 
I'll just use the uh, the shader blue. It'll be a little bit darker, but that's all right. Three. And I typically, like I said, when I do the hats, if they're these kind of guys or my, like this boy here, underneath the bill of the hat, I will put where they grab. And he grabs there, he's grabbed the back of his hat too. So, and his, he's all greasy on his pants. So it's just all paying attention to what, imagine what these guys would be doing. away from his face a little bit so he don't end up with a blue face. Just keep working that in there. See if I tip that back right now, it would be all up in his face. Any other questions? I be glad to answer if I could. Here's his little strap. Hey, Rich, do you uh, participate in any shows? Have you talked about that? I, I have not. Um, no, I don't. I, I have not participated in any. Um, I went to quite a few. I used to go over to, is it Maquoketa? They have a show over there. Um, but I, I've never participated. I'm, I get too weirded out by it. I don't know. Not much of a competitor. But yeah, I've, uh, a lot of people say, you know, you need to get out there, get your stuff out there and <clears throat> start competing, get your name out there. And, and I'm, and I'm going to work on that. I, like I said, when I was working, I just did not have time to, to you know, put myself fully out there to get, to do anything. It was just, too much. So I intend on doing a lot more. Uh, here comes an ugly color. I'm going to put, <clears throat> I decided I was going to make his shirt a uh, yellow. And whether we'll get this done or not, I don't know. Uh, small brush. I'm just hitting him with, misting him with a little more water, kind of drying out. <clears throat> Rich, a couple of questions in the chat. Uh, they're wanting to know what brand of paint is the Georgia clay that you use? Uh, that is a good question because I've just bought some other Georgia clay that I did not like. So the one that I always use, the go to, is uh, is it the Delta Ceram Coat? This yep. one, you can't, but that's, yeah, that's the one I go to. I bought, I bought a different brand. I don't even know what it was, but it was, it still was Georgia clay, but it looked, did not look good. It didn't look the same, I guess I should say. And then did you say that that was a Harley Repsol pattern that you've modified? Yep. Okay. Yep. I've used quite a few, a few of his, they're, uh, I, I love them. Like once I, it's funny when I'm doing these guys, I keep getting out of there. But that, when I do these guys, I can almost see it right away. As soon as I start cutting up near the face or get the face out, um, <laughs> I pretty much can tell this is going to, this, what kind of face it's going to turn out to be. Um, but, and yeah. how big are those? Is it about six inches? Seven inches tall. Okay. Yep. Seven inches tall and not very wide at all. Probably an inch wide, inch and something. Rich, um, do you, uh, is there a drying period of time that you give it before you put the BLO on it? Or is it right after this? I, I do it right after. I think in uh, Bishops, I think they, it says in their 
their stuff to wait overnight, but I'm too impatient. So I, I, uh, I don't, I let it, I hit it with a hair dryer. It looks all chalky. And then I go immediately put the boiled linseed oil on it. And I let it sit for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I wipe off the excess. And then I, I automatically go ahead and put the, that acrylic on it or the polyacrylic. It's, this is all I use. Uh, Min wax polyacrylic and it's a matte finish. And I'll put it on right as soon as I'm, uh, yeah, as soon as I do the boiled density oil on it and it, it sits for 15 minutes or so. Okay, and thanks. They, yeah. You just brush, you just brush the BLO on? Uh, yeah, yep, I sure do. Uh, they, you know, I probably, if I had some big way to dip it, it's probably better to dip it and then let it sit. But yeah, I brush it on. It doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to hurt it any. They seem to turn out all right. Okay. But this is about the way I go with, with every, every one of them. Um, unless I'm going to do something totally different. And I experiment with a lot of the colors. I mean, I, <clears throat> sometimes with the faces, if I'm doing a cowboy, uh, one of the cowboys, I will use, instead of using, well, I'll, sometimes I'll mix the tomato spice with a little bit of Pueblo color, and it gives it an, a pretty neat tone. But you got to be careful with it. Again, it just, that Pueblo color will take over and and just changes it changes it drastically but if i just use a little bit of it it looks fine it gives it a nice skin suntan sunburn okay that's probably good enough on that i'm in the shadows here and it's making it difficult I'm sorry to keep going out of frame there but i'm having a time seeing it So there's the shirt and the pants. The shoes I do with a, yeah, I didn't pick a hair color out for the guy, but I'll do his shoes next since we're getting close here. Um, the shoes I just used the nutmeg brown. I think that's what I had. Did I? Yeah, nutmeg brown. <clears throat> so, and with that, I used three drops of nutmeg brown to a teaspoon of water. Spray real quick. <clears throat> a little more. Yeah, so I had a little bit of that blue ran onto the shoe, but that's all right. I'm uh, super glad that I was on here, guys. I'm I'm, <laughs> I'm glad I did it, because boy, I sure was thinking, man, alive. I don't know how this is going to end up, and hopefully, it's turned out okay, and someone learned a little bit of something. Yeah, we definitely appreciate it. Yeah, I, you bet. <clears throat> Rich. Yes, sir. Um, do you normally pre-mix your paints or do you just do it for the demo? Uh, no, I did it for the demo just to save time. And I, because it, this is the way it works for me. If I was to mix the, matter of fact, I'm surprised that with the caps off that they're all sitting here and then all the liquid's still inside of them because I'm probably the clumbiest guy in the world. And then being on here is just going to magnify that. So super surprised I've still got paint in the little dishes. And it's not all over the floor. And you'd probably see me go and do a direct meltdown. Do you try to keep some of the paints with the lids on and use them for at least a few days or so? Or, I don't. Uh, no, because it's, yeah, I pitch them. Um, I'm trying to get myself to a point where I will remember or write down, okay, I use this color for that, but I, 
I need focus factor or something. I don't know. I just, when I get out, I tell you, when I start out in the, in the shed, if I'm going to carve something, uh, my wife thinks it's ridiculous and funny, but I will clean. I have to clean up my area. I have to clean the floor up and before I even start, because I, I'm, if it's cl super cluttered, I just, I don't know what happens, but I, it's just a habit. I come out and I clean the floor up, clean the wood chips up that I have. And then I, that's how I go. That's, that's my the way I do it. So that is probably good enough too with his shoes. I could probably go a little more, but I think they're gonna be dark now. Once that oil would go on there, it's gonna be dark. So yeah, here we are with that. Um, I really didn't mix any color for his, for his apron. And I really didn't mix color for his hair, but I'm sure I could come up with something. Uh, I don't have this, but this is a little bit of white. And like I said, I, I, I experiment with the colors and um, it's not always going to be the same. How are we doing, guys? We're running about 15 after four, Rich. Okay. And this one here is not a mix. I'm just going to kind of dab it on. It's just white paint. And I'll just go right over everything. And then some like down in this area or the side, I might add a little more white, but I'm just, it's just a really washed down white that I'll put on there. Mm-hmm. Man, I am, I am just working in the shadows, so whatever's happening is happening. So. Hey, Rick. Yeah. Yeah, hey, I want to say thanks for this. Uh, I've never thought about using wash before when painting any of my carvings, but I definitely am going to be uh, using your techniques from now on. Awesome. I appreciate that. Yeah, by all means, I, uh, well, like I said, I, I kind of have to hand it to Phil and Vicki. They kind of, with their paint style, you know, I never believed that that chalky color, once you put the oil on, though, man, it just pops out. I, I don't know how many people in the class will just say, nope, I, I still need more. I still need more on there, Bill. If you're going to do that, you better maybe practice on a piece of wood first and see how it reacts. <clears throat> Cause it will, it'll fail you. So uh, I'll just kind of briefly talk about what I would do with this. So I, on his, on his uh, apron, I would just take some of that asphaltum and I could probably do it. <clears throat> and just lightly go on the sides where he may have grabbed his bib. Let me see if I can water this down enough. So, yeah, still a little bit. Right here. And then behind it. And that, that color there is just asphalt and I thought it kind of looked like looked a little greasy and since it right now I got that weird line see that that's that line I was talking about if you're a young girl and you can't quite get the makeup right if that's what it ends up doing it looks funky so just take a little bit of water and and it'll take it wash it out it may push a little of that color out 
but it's it's an apron, so they're going to be a little dirty, so it doesn't bother it. So just let it. If you get a little bit heavy there, add water to it and just let it push, you know, into the middle of that apron or whatever you're doing. And depending on how that dries, you know, <clears throat> if it if it looks like it got into that uh, my burned in you know stand steak stand. I just burn it again. Just take the burner and get going and hit it again. I've also I've added paint after I've put the the, the polyacrylic on it. I went you know and just kind of if I it, you know a dry brush on on spots so that it doesn't look right. So on jeans or something like that, if I've already put the polyacrylic on it and I just don't like the look of it, I just if it's a you know I need to add some blue. I might just go in and dry brush it on and just hit a piece of paper a few times and then just come it through and just touch areas that I need to, the, what are I want, that I want to fix, I guess. But uh, yeah, let's see if I can get his teeth in here. And the teeth, I'll just go plain white. Try not to breathe. But these patterns are so cool. If you get his book, they really, they're so helpful because it, it's an easy pattern. A lot of the ones that I first, when I was first doing them, I would just cut out the front pattern, the front of it, because, you know, it, it's easy enough with these small ones to move that wood off. It's not like it's a huge bunch of wood you're moving off. So I would just cut the front pattern out on these smaller ones. And here's where we're gonna have trouble. He's got a little bit of a gap in his teeth right there. And that'll be all right. So, yeah. What and type I, of brushes do you use? Uh, whatever's cheap. This one here is, uh, this is Master's Touch 18 over zero round. But usually if it's on sale, like this probably, I know I got this at Hobby Lobby when they have their 50% off. And I'll just grab some brushes. I probably got, my God, I, I bet I got as many brushes as I got tools. So, and, and that's basically, that's pretty much it besides the, well, I still had the hair to do, but I didn't pick a color for the hair for whatever reason. Uh, da, da, da. I'll tell you what, we're just gonna experiment here. Here's where the experimentation comes in. I'm just gonna use a brown oxide and see what happens. <clears throat> Don't know what's gonna happen here. All right. That'd be all right. On these two, if I, you know, that's pretty light, but um, I may go back in and highlight some of the hair with some black or just to give it uh, some different variation to color. <clears throat> this is gonna go on a little bit darker. All right, guys. So in there, I would probably add a little bit of dark to create a little bit more shadow up there. But uh, that, that hair color didn't turn out half bad. That's a, what is that? What did I say I was gonna use? Anyways, brown oxide, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So other than the, uh, 
you know, looking at the skin color of it, I will probably maybe go another. No, I don't think so. I think I'll just leave it just as it is. So right there, I would go, go ahead and, uh, and then since only because I'm on here, uh, I would probably mess around and get myself some shading down in here. Obviously, I'm going to finish up the apron, uh, get some dark back there. But you just go around and pick and decide, okay, where are my, where are these shadows going to be, and uh, go at it lightly. Just you know, don't don't think in terms of that's got to be a dark shadow there. So you hit it right away with the dark uh, color, and it, you'll destroy it. So just uh, just layer them on. You know, if you wanted a good a good shadow, or if, I mean, it, I don't know, I guess how to, to put it, but I just go at it carefully. <laughs> So that's about it, guys. All right, Rich, any other questions for him today? Okay, Rich, well, uh, thanks for coming on with us. Uh, thanks for sharing those painting tips. It's uh, fantastic and really good idea as far as taking other patterns and modifying those and coming up with your own uh, your own style. So those, those are really great carvings, and we appreciate you sharing that with us today. Um, yeah. Just wanted to uh, let everybody know kind of what we have coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, Roger Bean's going to be on with us next week. Roger's usually on with us. I'm not sure if he's out there today, but uh, he'll be on next week on the 12th. Uh, Ray Meyer's on with us today. He's going to be on with us on the 19th. They're both going to be doing Santa Claus uh, demonstrations. So uh, we'll be heading back to Christmas time uh, with uh, Roger talking about spools and uh, Ray doing the spiral Santa. Uh, on April the 2nd, Steve Tomaszek's coming on. Uh, CCA member Joe Yu is going to be on with us on April the 9th. Again, Chris Hammock's going to be coming on with us April 16th to talk more about the Carving the Rockies show. Uh, he may be having, having a few other people on with him on that day. Uh, Brad Andrews is coming up on April the 23rd. Uh, Cecilia Schiller, which is uh, known as the Crank Lady on Instagram. If you all haven't heard of her, you need to look her up on Instagram. Uh, the crank lady. She's she's doing some really unique stuff, and uh, she's going to be on with us on April the 30th. And then Dana from uh, Carving Junkie, she's on with us today. Uh, she's going to be on with us on May the 14th. Uh, she'll also be doing an article uh, probably for the next uh, newsletter that we'll be presenting. So I uh, look forward to having Dana on on the uh, 14th of May. Uh, again, Rich, I appreciate you coming on today. Thanks for sharing with us. Uh, thank you all for coming on. Uh, I think we had 110 people on the meeting today. Make sure you share this opportunity with other carvers. Again, uh, we have a lot of demonstrations and stuff that we do on these meetings. Again, it's all free of charge. Uh, so have people come on and uh, check out the, uh, the meetings we have with us. Uh, thank you again for joining us on the International Association of Wood Carvers. Uh, we'll see you all next uh, Saturday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, again with Roger Bean. Thank you all for joining us.